Hi guys, this is Ian Fairley, and welcome back to another episode of My Dinosaur Series. Last time on My Dinosaur Series, we talked about how these magnificent marine reptiles swam mostly underwater, appearing in all different species and sizes. We furthermore explain how the dolphin-like Ophthalmosaurus had eyes as white as the giant squids and traveled in large groups called pods, like today's modern dolphins. We also discussed how the big mouth sharp tooth swimmer Leoplorodon was as large as a humpback whale and can easily hunt their prey more in wet waters than on dry land. Now that everything about these marine reptiles has been covered, it's time to get back to talking about more dinosaurs. And for this episode, I am going to be talking about two theropod dinosaurs that originated from the Jurassic period. Allosaurus and Megalosaurus. Let's start with the Allosaurus, shall we? The name of the dinosaur Allosaurus means strange lizard because of its light vertebrae, like those of cassowary legs. The discoveries of its fossils have been located in the U.S. of North America, Portugal of Europe, Tanzania of Africa, and possibly a country in Australia. Year 1877. Thousands of Allosaurus bones have been discovered in the USA with footprints and possibly its own eggs. About 40 skeletons have mostly been found in Utah, while more than 60 have been discovered worldwide, especially Colorado. A known species, A. fragilis, has been unearthed in the Morrison Formation, which consists of a formation that centers around Wyoming and Colorado, covering an area of 600,000 square miles. Those are a lot of miles for two states, don't you think? Only seven current species of Allosaurus fossils have been described by most paleontologists. The largest may have stood up to be a length of 30 to 40 feet, about bigger than a bus, and almost as big as T-Rex. Allosaurus belonged to a group of theropod dinosaurs called the Allosauridae, which classifies a family of medium to large sized two-legged carnivorous theropods, originating from the late Jurassic period 150 million years ago. Since Allosaurus was a carnivore, it may have taken on prey such as the spike-tailed Stegosaurus and the long-necked Apatosaurus. Paleontologists refer to Allosaurus as Lion of the Jurassic since they may have hunted in prides. When it comes to challenging prey, and usually alone when chasing easier prey. Juvenile Allosauruses may have been as fast as wolf packs at a speed of 30 miles per hour, whereas the adults were probably too heavy to sprint as fast as the youngsters. Regardless, they were fast, but relied more on ambush attacks to catch their prey, similar to how tigers, lions, and leopards do today. The best places for Allosaurus to ambush their prey would be the grassy plains of the Jurassic landscape. Allosaurus's sharp teeth were designed to cut through the meat of its struggling prey, rather than chomp through bone like the T-Rex. The teeth were like saw blades that can cut through anything that is vulnerable, and its sharp hand claws may have also done the trick when weakening other dinosaurs. And like most animals, prehistoric and present day, Allosaurus may have been territorial meaning it fought tooth and nail against rivals to claim what must belong to him or her. It's common with lots of modern animals such as hippos, elephants, bears, and many more. Though Allosaurus was top predator of its time, it could still get injured very easily by prey that were able to defend themselves. This dinosaur was also a scavenger, so it will also eat leftover dino carrion. Now that we have gone over everything about Allosaurus, it's time to move on to our next carnivorous dinosaur for the episode, the Megalosaurus. The name of the dinosaur Megalosaurus means great lizard because of its tremendous size of up to 30 feet long and 10 feet tall, about the size of a bulldozer. Its discoveries have been located in the limestone quarries and stonefield slate of Oxfordshire in England, 1676 when it was the very first meat-eating dinosaur before the plant-eating iguanodon. Several footprints and part of its bones were discovered by the first English paleontologist, William Buckland, 
and was given the full name by James Parkinson, Megalosaurus Bucklandi, in year 1824. The bones of this animal was thought to be considered a thigh bone of a giant. Before 1824, scientists didn't realize that the bones belonged to a reptilian-like creature like this. Until scientists knew enough about different dinosaur species, every single species were misnamed as Megalosaurus, especially the jagged tooth Carcharodontosaurus from Africa. If Megalosaurus was a hunter at catching prey, it was probably about as fast as a roadrunner, sprinting up to a speed of 20 miles per hour, fast enough to catch up to a speeding bicycle. I saw that in a documentary once, or maybe a couple times. Megalosaurus belonged to a group of theropod dinosaurs called Megalosauroids, a group of theropods that originated from the mid-Jurassic period 200 million years ago to the very late Jurassic period 140 million years ago. One of the prey Megalosaurus specialized in hunting is long-necked sauropods such as Cetiosaurus, meaning whale lizard. The prey may have been bigger than the predator itself, so it's most likely that Megalosaurus hunted in groups or tried to pick a fight with it head-on alone. The fossilized jawbones of Megalosaurus in its lower jaw half were equipped with razor-sharp teeth in case it needed to bite through the flesh of its own food. Throughout its life, the dinosaurs regrew new teeth whenever it lost its old ones before it reaches its highest age just like with us human beings. Just like the Allosaurus, Megalosaurus also had sharp claws for scratching prey, just like how big cats like lions and tigers scratch their prey, and mostly their opponents. Just like with the Iguanodon, Megalosaurus was also commonly mistaken to be a mythical reptile, or even a dragon, before the word dinosaur was even invented. What a strange but funny coincidence. Well guys, that's all the facts for these carnivorous theropods for this episode. If you liked this video, please leave a like in the comment section and subscribe to this channel. Next time on my dinosaur series, we will be talking about more plant-eating dinosaurs, such as the duck-billed and Montosaurus, the titan-sized Argentinosaurus, and the weird but wonderful Ceratopsian dinosaur, Pachyrhinosaurus. This is Ian Fairley, and thank you for listening.